6.4D React. We've been waiting on this tool for quite some time, and this tool, in my opinion, is a game changer for public safety and really for any first responder that's out there. But of course, it's not limited to just that market. It's a tool that is great even for construction sites or security sites or anywhere where you might need to onion skin a site. We use it on the security side of things as well as, as training it in the public safety side of things. So React launched today and there's been a lot of buzz around it. I wanted to be able to give you a first look at React. So let's have a look at our computer screen here. And this is the React interface. Now you notice it's a pretty simple interface. You see a number of maps here in front of you. This is because I've changed out hard drives for the purpose of this quick demonstration. Um, but all there is to it is any map you've ever created is going to show up inside of this window here. And so to call up a map, you'll just simply click on it and it'll, it will open up the map you've already worked on. We're going to work on a first time map here today. So the first thing we do is come over here to the lower right hand corner and click on plus. Very simple. So we're going to create a, a new map. When we click, click on that, it's going to come up and, and tell us it's an unnamed map. Let's really quickly give it a name. And we'll call this a, a road fatal. Choose save. And it immediately is looking for an area where we have been. Now, we're actually in a, another part of the Las Vegas area here. I'm going to show you how to create a few different maps. So the first thing that we're going to do is going to go to Import Images. It opens up the interface. And let's call up a, a particular accident scene here. So we'll go in here and grab this one. Now, here's a really small scene. And as we click on some of the, the shots, we can see that there's been some, some angles that have been captured. Well, we don't want to use those. Those aren't angles that we can use in this particular scenario. So we would use these as augmented images for our accident reports. So I'm going to grab this first nadir, or nadir image right here and we're going to grab this, this next one. So we've got seven photos. Can Pix4D put together an ortho with seven photos? Let's find out. So we're going to open those and that immediately adds them to the area. Now what you're seeing right here in this map is you're seeing the images that were taken during the, the flight. There's not a whole lot of data here. This is one of the benefits of React is it can work really well even with sparse data sets. In fact, it actually works a little better with sparse data sets. So let's dive in and have a look at what's there. Now, real simple, we can add more images. That don't need to do that. Tells me where the images were captured, tells me the, the total number of images and the sizes. Choose Start Processing. Now this is just going to take a second. I'm going to drop this down to the lower window here so you can time it. There won't be any cuts here whatsoever. Let's watch how quickly React assembles this ortho force or this, this 2D uh, corrected map on the bottom or, or overhead scene on the bottom. It's going to go very fast. Now it's only seven images, true, but I think you'll be surprised at the quality that it puts together. So we're three quarters of the way done so far. And you can see it's just cruising right along, moving very, very quickly. Now, while this is still processing, I'm going to point out the fact that this tool is designed to be very lightweight. This will run on your MDT or on basically any laptop. You don't need a lot of computing horsepower. This is very different than its, uh, its big brother, the Pix4D Mapper system. So it's uh, put most of that together. Now it's just simply going to stitch the images together. And voila, there's our scene. So you can see it operates very, very quickly. It gives us uh, the, the site information that we need to see very, very quickly in the scene here. It took almost no time whatsoever to put that together and assemble that, that scene. And yet we can dive in and we can see some incredible detail in the overall scene. So this is the primary benefit of React is how quickly it can work and stitch images together. But this is nowhere near where it finishes. There's certainly more that we can do with the tool. You'll notice here on the left side of the interface that we have a number of different buttons that we can work with. So let's start off by enlarging our scene a little bit. And so we'll go down here and choose the mark tool. Now in the mark tool, we can choose a number of different things. So for example, here we're going to choose a point. We're going to call this here, this will be V1. It gives us our GPS data, etc. right there. Choose save. And let's put another mark down, V2. 
And so immediately we were able to put some information here that shows up on the right hand side of our display. And we can also import markers from a different project. There's more that we can do to it. So if we, for example, need to mark the distance between two pieces, go in here and choose the measure tool. Let's choose a line. And perhaps we want to measure from the back end of this vehicle to the corner point of this vehicle here. Go up and choose the checkbox. This tells us that it's six feet, uh, 6.18 feet. We're going to save that as a marker. So we'll have this uh, name distance between vehicles. Like so. So now we've got those markers in there, we've got those pieces that are in there. And if we need a general descriptor for the scene, go in and lay down a, a GPS mark somewhere. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to move this scene up or, or down in area, it might be that we want to mark one of these points that we've got right here. So let's just give that a, a marker and all that is a GPS marker or a GPS, a GPS center. Save that. So now we've got our scene and we can start importing you know, more and more things into the scene as we wish. And if we start getting a lot of, of data on the screen here, it might be that we're going to want to turn that off. So we can go up here and choose no markers and it turns everything off. Or if we want to see only the markers, we've now enabled the markers and we can see those showing up here and, and see them showing up here. And then last but not least in that upper right hand corner, upper left hand corner, we can choose markers and titles. So it gives us the markers and titles. We can also choose elevation here. So this gives us an elevation map and it's fairly rudimentary, but uh, it certainly gives us an overall look of what's there. Um, we can split screen that and turn off the split screen or, or look at the elevation versus the actual scene itself. And then last but not least, go back to our full, full view here. Additionally, in that lower left hand corner, we can, can zoom in on the map or you can just simply use your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in. So it's, it's pretty easy to do overall. So you saw how quickly that scene assembled. Let's put together a slightly more complex scene and get an idea of how something uh, a little bit more complex will render, how quickly it will render. We're also going to reveal one or two of the, the challenges or at least one of the challenges of Pix4D React. So let's, re let's select that plus sign again and go up here and choose import images. And let's go to another data folder here. So here we've got a number of, of overhead shots and we're gonna select all of these. Now this particular scene was flown in a dual grid pattern. So it's gonna take it just a minute to import all the data. We'll see it shift over to exactly where it is. Here we can see the way that that flight was, was managed. It might not look like a grid, but it actually was because we've got uh, cross-hatch data. We also were in a very windy, windy environment here, so the aircraft wasn't as precise as we would have liked for it to have been. Let's choose Start Processing. And as it imports the images here, let's talk about some of the challenges that we're going to have. So one of the places where React is not optimal is where you have highly varied terrain. So if you've got lots of, of differences in elevations on the ground, like you've got hills, uh, or you've got towers, or you've got buildings, uh, et cetera, that are fairly high, or there's a disparate distance between the highest point and the lowest point in the scene. This is a place where React really is not optimal. It works, and you're going to see how well it works here in just a second. But this particular scene is going to display some challenges in the overall image, and we'll have a look at what those are. Bear in mind, React is not something that you're going to use for your absolute final end product, and unless you're perhaps not looking at accident scene reconstruction, but you're simply looking at documenting the scene, and React works very, very well for that. So as this assembles, let's have a, a further look at what's going on here. So as it begins to assemble, you can see where some of those pictures are laying in. And if you'll notice down in this area right here, we're seeing uh, fewer images that are stitching and coming together than we have through this area right here. There's some consistency in the way that these overlaps are being achieved. Well, down here, we uh, have got some significant elevation change. There's roughly 40 feet in elevation change between the upper part of that hill and the lower part of that hill, or I should say the upper part of the... the uh, the berm on the, the uh, west side of the road versus the berm on the right side of the road. So what 
we're trying to do here is React is trying to assemble this as best as it possibly can based on the data. So where React really shines is in predominantly flat areas and areas that don't have uh, you know, a lot of berm or, or a lot of angle that's coming down into them or if you're in a residential area, uh, if we've got just simply houses of a similar height, it works really well in that environment. But if we've got you know, three, four story buildings in that environment, it doesn't really uh, give us a high quality data set that we would get you know, in other environments. Uh, this is a, that's a place where you really want to, uh, you're going to really want to be working with Pix4D Mapper. So this is nearly assembled here as it's laying the rest of it in. Um, while this is operating, I'm going to make a couple of other comments. So React doesn't look at every single image and, and put the GPS in pieces together based on every single image the way that, that Mapper does. Remember, this is designed to be a roadside or an on-site very, very fast reporting tool. And that's part of the, the speed that's happening here. So uh, occasionally we're gonna get a little hiccup here or there, but we can throw that off to the side because if we need something bigger, we're going to open this project up inside of Mapper. It's not going to be a problem. Now, this is running a lot slower because we have quite a few more images than we had in the previous project. Remember, the first project we looked at only had seven images and it was very, very fast to operate. In the case of this one, we've got, what, five times that number of images. We're still nearly complete on the data set. As soon as this is done stitching, I'm going to show you a couple of ways that we can improve on how we run these data sets through. So let's get back to our map here. We're at 91%. And normally in these uh, these sorts of podcasts, I would be stopping the the uh, camera and allowing this to assemble. But I want you, the viewer, to have a pretty good idea of how quickly this is going to assemble. So we're seeing it come through pretty good. We're at 93% here. By the way, notice off to the side you've got a scale indicator. So it gives you at least a rough idea of how big your area is. And of course, we can measure that after the fact. And by the way, the laptop that I'm working with here is a 16 gigabyte Hewlett Packard um, uh, Elite Series. So this is not anything that's, that's any great shakes. And here we go, creating the overviews and putting this all together. And voila, we have our scene. Now let's look at where some of the challenges are. So as we work down into to this mid area that you're seeing right here. The scene looks great. Everything's there. We can, can see all the, the parts. You can uh, you know, see the total station that, that's laid out here. Uh, we've got great, you know, great scene overall. Let's move down here though, where we've got quite a big shift in elevation. So this truck that you see right here, this semi that's right here, has uh, gone up on the side of the berm and it's roughly 20 feet higher than the rest of the roadway that's down here. So this is where some of the challenges uh, of, of your flight can come into play as you're working with React, is just being aware of those, those heights and, and so forth. Now we obviously can't cut the, the truck out of the picture here. What could have happened is had we gotten more information from the front end of this incident, so in other words, when this was flown, there wasn't enough data on that front side, React would have done a better job of putting this together. But uh, as it is right here, it's got not quite enough information and we've got that severe change in elevation. So this is something that you want to watch out for. And one of the other things that we've discovered with React is React works best with less data. So again, coming back to that first comment about how we can optimize better for React, if we want to capture something roadside and we just need it very, very fast, what I recommend you do is simply fly your single pattern. In other words, fly, fly up, fly down, fly up, and fly down. Capture a single row or a series of images in a single row of your scene or the area that you're looking to put together. And you can stop record or however your, your application works. Uh, either way, be aware where your double grid begins. And rather than importing your east, uh, south, or excuse me, your east, west, and your north, south images as a double grid into React, only import just the north, south track or only import the east, west track. You're still going to want to fly 20% over your scene like you normally would to capture that extra data, but you'll find that React provides a better image and of course operates much, much faster than it's going to operate uh, if you are putting in the, the double grid. So this saves you some time. 
Again, you'll still probably shoot that double grid so that you can import it into Mapper later on to do, to do uh, if you're doing 3D, you'll want that. But even if you're just doing 2D and you want something a little bit more in depth, then that's the tool you're going to use. Now, another thing that we don't have with React, React does not have the ability to import control points. Why? Well, because again, it's a very fast roadside preliminary reporting tool. So let's look at how we put together those preliminary reports and how we might use that with uh, the PIX40 product and being able to deliver something right straight from our, our patrol vehicle or roadside or wherever it is that we're working. And so once we've got uh, all of this uh, assembled here, and let's put in a couple of markers just so that you, you have them here. So we'll put in a point here and we'll call that uh, V1. Um, got the truck here, we'll call that V2. Slide up here a bit. Uh, we've got V3. And this is a, um, uh, a uh, roadside. So we'll call the civilian stop just because this was, the vehicle was not involved. And we'll slide up here. V3. V4. Okay, so now we've got some things over here that we could uh, do a little bit with. Great. Okay, so we've got uh, our information that's, that's there. Um, it might be for purposes of reference that we're going to want to zoom in and mark where the, the total station was operating. I'm just going to grab that from the, the top of the head. This is for reference purposes only. Great. All right, now we're going to go through and go up here to this upper right hand corner and click export. When we choose export, we've got a few different things that we can do. We can export the whole map, we can export a PDF, uh, a uh, GeoTIFF, etc., etc., or just a, basically the JPEG is a screenshot of everything overall. Now we want to export our markers and titles, and we can choose to export with no markers. So we can choose markers and titles, markers without titles, and no markers. So let's choose export with markers and titles, and we want a PDF report. Choose our size here. Yep, we want to choose letter size because we're here in the United States. Let's include elevations and we're going to include our markers and choose export. And it's going to ask us where we want that to go. So let's go ahead and put that on our desktop just so we can access it. Okay, and choose save. What's going to happen here is that React is going to assemble a PDF report that we'll be able to, to look at and we can send downstream and, uh, and share it out as it needs to be shared. We may be sharing this with Commander, we might be sharing it with a construction site supervisor or you know, whatever it is that we might find we're running into. So here's our report. So first off on the front page we have a copy of our image here. We have, uh, it indicates that it's a north of mosaic and shows us on the, the scene where north is. That's accurate. Tells us what our ground sampling distance in this particular scene is. It shows uh, our markers in there, so we can see all of, of what those pieces are. Tells us our number of markers, and then it goes through and it identifies the geolocation of each one of the markers that are here with a, a scale a indicator scale constraint next to it. And to zoom in of each what, what each one of those two pieces are. We scroll down and we get our, our elevations as well. So this should give you a pretty good idea of how React works. We've got our, our PDF there that we can now ship off to, to anyone else. We've got something that we can archive on scene. We've got something that we can export from React and drop directly into Pix4D Mapper if that's what else we need to do. So we have quite a bit of data that we've been able to collate or aggregate and present very, very quickly. So let's just shut this down one more time and, and go back to our, our map scene here. And overall, it looks pretty good. So Pix4D React is a fantastic new tool available right now from Pix4D.com. Be sure to check out uh, the Sundance Media Group training for Pix4D Mapper as well as for Pix4D React. When you train with us, you also uh, get this uh, book that you see here that is Pix4D for public safety uses. And uh, until next time, keep checking in with our podcast, subscribe below, and fly safe.